champ is here! The champ is here! Hello and welcome to Billy Ho Sports. Final week of the PGA season. We are at the Tour Championship, Hot Atlanta, Georgia, East Lake Golf Course to see who the best is, sort of. Uh, so I've I've actually ranted about disagreeing with how they uh, do the cha- the playoff format with the two previous events this week and last week. Four times FedEx points allows people like Lucas Glover to shoot up fifty spots and ch- and win the whole thing after just catching lightning in a bottle in the last month of the season, things like that. He wins Wyndham, which he is playing phenomenal golf. But I always thought that it was more of a best overall season than just whoever just gets hot fire the last month of the season, like I said. Anyway, so if you need a refresher, here it is, the format of this week's tournament. The points leader after today, which the leaders have yet to tee off. I'm filming this right about noon Eastern Standard. The points leader starts at 10 under, second, eight under, third, seven under, fourth, six, fifth player, five under, six through 10 goes four under, 11 through 15 goes three under, 16 to 20, two under, 21 to 25, one under, and everybody else is even par. So... It is what it is, and uh, we're going to do it until they change it. So we just played DFS, so we're picking golfers, and that's what I'm here to do. But before we get started into that, I really just want to thank all my pals over at Billy Ho's DFS Flophouse, the Discord for their continued support, wisdom in the chat, all that good stuff. We've had our ups and downs uh, like we do every season, but we always get big winners, and we've ha- we've done that this year. Uh, the little chat that could, if you want to call it that. But just th- drop a comment in the video and ask, say, hey, I want to join that Discord, and I'll put the uh, invite link in there. I can't ever seem to get a permanent link. It always expires for some reason, so I'll just drop a link in the in the comments, and then we'll go from there. So anyway, I'll hook you up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. We're growing this channel. It's uh, We're just now hitting our stride, and uh, we'll be right back in a couple of weeks for the fall swing. Uh, so smash that like button, and let's get it on. You know it. I'm ready, man. Ready to get it on. Yeah, yeah. Joe. All right. I looked at the early forecast, and I don't see any rain. Thank God. Maybe we won't have ball in hand, uh, baby butt soft, pampered golf this week, but we will have hot Atlanta steamy week, and it's going to be the same here in Louisville where I'm from. We've enjoyed these last couple of weeks of weather, but it is going to be upper 90s and steamy. I imagine how it's going to be in Atlanta when the humidity here in the Ohio Valley is awful. So you're going to see sweaty butt cracks and everything else just like you did a couple weeks ago in Memphis. So just think of Memphis, and this is what we're going to have at East Lake. So East Lake, and I got a little flyover. It's not hole by hole, but it's kind of like just like a general course overview, and it's going to show you the golf course, and you can see how narrow the fairways are. You can see where the bunkers are at. You can see where the water hazards are at. So just kind of get a good look as I'm going over thing everything here. So we're going to be looking at a 7,340 yard par 70 golf course. Yes, another par 70. No more par fives to speak of, right? So we got two par fives anyway. Uh, greens are a little bit bigger at this one, 6,100 square feet on average. We got the hashtag Team Zoiza fairways, uh, and we'll have Bermuda grass greens. Uh, like I said, there, there's really, if for a course called East Lake. I think there's only like four holes with water in play, 74 bunkers guarding both the fairways and the greens. But the thing that's going to be different, which the similarity in the narrow fairways, we're talking 28 yards wide, just like it is this week at BMW. We're not having that Kentucky bluegrass rough. It's two and a half inch Bermuda, and we know how hard that is to play from. So that it's like the hardest rough to get out of 
and all you need is two and a half inches for your ball to just disappear into the abyss. Thank God. I wish I had spotters for the amount of golf balls I've lost in Bermuda rough because I could see exactly where it went and then, and I can't find it. So course history is back. That's the other thing. Uh, we've got multiple years of course history played here. The last four years, I believe uh, this is going to be year five started in 2020 with this new format. It's hard to believe it's been that long. Actually, I, I didn't realize it, but anyway, we got the two par fives. I believe number six is reachable and 18 is home in two for the bigger hitters. Don't forget the heat and humidity is going to add a lot of distance to these golf balls this week. So keep that in mind. So obviously we're looking at the stats, the skill sets and whatnot right now. Uh, this week will be similar to the BMW when you because the accuracy is paramount. And it's even more so, in my opinion, like I said, with the Bermuda rough, because even though you got four inch Kentucky bluegrass, you saw guys being able to hack it out and run it up. And those guys were worried about flyer lies and everything else. Well, this time around, it's going to be hacking out a lot of times and leaving yourself 50 to 75 to 100 yard wedge shots to try to save par. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your approach numbers. And uh, we'll get to that right now. So like I said, similar to the BMW, accuracy off the tee. Distance will be way up, like I said, with the heat and humidity. I'll be showing along the way the uh, the stats from Fantasy National on how this course plays. Uh, the narrow fairways, Bermuda Rough, is obviously more penal. Greens gained will be more important, even though the greens are a little bit larger, because a lot of times greens in regulation, you got guys, if you miss the fairway, a lot of times you're not going to be able to hit the green or you won't even be, you're just going to be looking to advance the ball as far as you can. Now the approaches when you are playing from a spot where you can go with the green will be longer, uh, 150 to 200. Uh, and like I said, keep in mind those 50 to hundred wedges for those uh, par savers. So that brings scrambling into play also. And then once we get on the greens, of course, around the green game is always important. I like to use short game in that category because that combines putting because greens putting will be crucial this week. And on the greens, putting from about 15 to 20 feet for those long birdies will be good. Uh, three putt avoidance, obviously. Approach putting. Uh, here in a few minutes, you'll see my stat model. I'm putting two stat models up here in a few minutes, and I'll show you those. Uh, so anyway, short game, like I said, around the green, putting, par four scoring with an emphasis, maybe 400 to 450. Uh, bump up all your DFS scoring stats because with only 30 guys and, and four rounds, we have to have high upside volatile players. Don't be afraid to take a shot on a guy that's going to get you high upside. We have to play ownership. You have to play ownership, ownership, ownership this week. Uh, you can't just sit there and throw in all the chalky guys, especially in larger field GPPs, because you will be splitting it with you and 200 of your best friends. Duplicate lineups will be had. All right. Well, getting into players, that, like I said, that's the first part of lineup strategy. Most people are going to spend all their salary. So the first thing you can do, and you'll hear it, leave 500 or more on the table. That should limit your chances of being duped by quite a bit. I usually start my lineups like when I do my models. I usually cut it off at 49.5, and then that way I know I won't have I will have at least 500 on the table. So remember DK points. Don't care how far under par you are. I know you get those coveted looking finishing points at the beginning. But in 2020, I bring this up every year, John Rahm started 800. Xander Shoffley was 300. They were five strokes different. Xander outscored Rahm in all the DK contests, 111 to 94, significantly. So you got eagles, you got birdies, you got streaks, you got bogey freeze. You got all kinds of stuff to make up for those. Just think of showdown, but showdown is one day. And these guys can always lose those finishing points. We got four days for these guys to go up and down with the finishing points. So, you know, guys like Rory, the dude is at the very top three 
are probably the ones with the biggest advantage, but anybody seven under and down is fair game. So we'll get into uh, the players in just a second. Um, so basically when I say play the ownership game, I like to have at least two to three guys in my lineup that it's going to make you different. Uh, don't be afraid to play wonky because everybody's just going to try to cram in all the wrong or not wrong because he's a hot mess right now, but all the Rory's, all the Scotties, all the top players, and then bottom feeders, whoever they can get at the bottom, because we will dip into the 5k range this week. And you will see like 13, five for Rory or some shit. I, I really don't, I recall what last year's pricing was, but that's kind of how it goes. Uh, so anyway, I had a really great week last year at the hero with only 16 guys in that tourney. So I, I know kind of what it's, what it's all about. Uh, now here's a first look model. Now, granted, I took the BMW model because we don't have a full field yet. We don't know who's in, who's out. So some of these players might not make it, but this is my first look model. And I just took in, into account all the stats that I mentioned, a little course history, some putting approach, driving accuracy, good drives, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, these are like the top 30 right here. Uh, so you can take a look at that. And I think it's going to be advantage Rory coming into this week because here in a second, I did an East Lake course history model. And there's going to be 30 guys there that you'll see. So that's the next model up. Rory is going to be the guy because he's won this event multiple times outside of the new format. He won it last year with the new format. So he's got like technically three wins. He loves this course. And the way he's driving the ball, he is going to have a monster advantage over these people. I can't imagine how far that ball is going to go in this heat. So it's going to be crazy. Uh, Scotty is a close second, obviously, and he might be the one 10 under to start. Uh, as of this filming, the leaders have yet to tee off, and it's basically Matty Fitzpatty and Scotty Too Hotty tied at 1100. So uh, 11 under is going to start the day in the lead. Uh, and then getting into other players for this week, Lucas Glover, uh, like we said, lightning in a bottle. He still carried it over to this week, so I give him credit for that. He's still getting it done. He's still getting after it. Uh, so he's got an outside chance to, you know, maybe get up in here since he's already got that win last week, and he's playing pretty well this week is, uh, also. So anyway, he's played here only twice, and it was like, decades apart it was 2009 2019 so before the new format but i think right now he's probably a better course fit than he's ever been in his life the way he's putting the ball and striking it uh and it's going to make him a super popular play uh it what it depends on the price if they give him a price bump because he's been so hot lately maybe that'll steer some ownership but if he's down at like 7200 or something he's going to be in every single lineup and probably with good reason. So he's a guy that we're going to have to wait on the price and ownership. He, he'll he be a pivot guy. Uh, another guy that I like, Sung J M had uh, mixed results in his four trips here, but I think it's due to his form. He's kind of like a current form guy. When he's playing well, he's really good. And when he's off, he's just not, you know, he's like a top T40 guy instead of like a competitor on Sunday. Now, he's gotten back in the mix at the Wyndham. Uh, I love the way he puts in uh, Bermuda. Uh, he's back home. He actually lives in Atlanta. He bought a house there a few years ago, FYI. So maybe he's staying at his house. Uh, so anyway, speaking of rounding back to form, also Justin Rose has it going again. And he rolls the rock, makes a ton of birdies. And he likes this course. He's got some decent history, even though he hasn't seen it since the format shift. Uh also, Victor Hovland is another favorite DK scoring machine of mine. I'm absolutely going to play him. The way he's striking it, he could crush this golf course. He could shoot multiple sub-65s. Chris Kirk, another one. He kind of fell apart Sunday. He shot back-to-back -back 66s Thursday and Friday, which is odd that he comes out and just is a complete disaster on Saturday. Holes 7 through 9, he went 5 over missing badly off the tee, which led him to lose probably almost all four of those strokes that he lost on those holes alone because uh, he went bogey double-double. 
and then he just never got it back together and he shot 75. But, you know, he's got the, today to see what he can do. But he likes East Lake and he's played there pretty well. So you can see it in the course history model, he's number one. Uh, but like I said, he's only, you know, he hasn't played at all that much. So um, anyway, Max Homa has just year 2022, but you see the way he's playing. He uh, got off to a rough start in his first foray. He shot 71 last year, and then he backed it up with a 62 in round two. And we know he can go low because he just set the course record the other day. Uh, when he's driving the ball well, his whole game follows, and he is just very dangerous. Uh, oh, I can't forget my boy uh, Xander, hashtag Team Zoiza. X-Man strikes the ball, strikes his irons on Zoiza grass fairways pretty well. Believe he's got a couple of wins here. He won his very first uh, rookie, uh, first event on a PGA Tour when he was a rookie at Eastlake before the format change. Uh, also, Wyndham, Wyndham Clark, who was a complete disaster at St. Jude, but I thought, you know, flop lag, nobody will play him. So he came back and played pretty well this week. I think with his distance and putting ability and irons, uh, he's going to be a dangerous guy. And on the contrary, John Rahm, who's a hot mess right now, I, I just, I don't know. I, it depends on the ownership. I might take a shot at him if he's like super, super low owned, but he's still a guy people go back to. He's he, he People will overthink it and think, oh, I'm going to get this guy low owned. And he'll end up being like 15% instead of 25. Everybody's going to have ownership this week because there's only 30 guys. Put it to, put it to you that way. Uh, so I'll polish off the show like this. Sam Burns and Denny uh, McCarthy, two guys that are just lights out putters. Sam Burns obviously fired uh, fired it off yesterday, eight under round, uh, back on track, and he can fire at East Lake the way he puts on Bermuda. Denny McCarthy is probably the best putter in this field, and his best surface is Bermuda. And I like the way he's gotten his ga- he got back together with the uh, ball striking because that's normally his weak part. He should be, as long as he's fairly accurate off the tee next week, he'll be fine. Uh, so, But unfortunately, he has no experience at East Lake that I can see. So that could be a problem. But that will matter. Uh, but that's going to do it for the preview show. I hope you enjoyed this whole season of my golf coverage. Please remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Hit that like button. And uh, until the flip side, fall swing, we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.